The first thing to remember when considering the geology of the cliffs of Moher is that they are still a work in progress. Anybody looking at the cliffs will notice that they are not made up of one type of rock. Rather, they are vertically layered in a number of clearly defined bands of rock of differing thickness. These stratified layers are chapters in the story of the making of the cliff and each signifies a separate cycle in their geological development. The origin of the rocks that form the cliffs of Moher date back over 300 million years to the Upper Carboniferous period. In that era, much of Europe was covered in warm seas and land masses occupied large regions beyond the present shores of the British Isles that have long since been drowned by the Atlantic Ocean. The area where the cliffs of Moher now rise from the sea was a warm subtropical estuary, the mouth of a large river that flowed down from a now vanished plain to the north and west of Ireland. Over the course of millions of years, this river washed down deposits of silt, which blocked up the channels between the sandbanks that formed its delta. As this happened, the river expanded to seek new outlets to the sea until the delta stretched out to the length of the present cliffs of Moher. The lower deposits of sand and silt began turning into sandstone, shale and flagstones. Forces such as river erosion, changing sea levels and earth movement meant that the rock layers were formed over five great cycles, each of which piled another stratified deposit on top of the one beneath. A band of black shale representing new silt gathering on top of a layer of rock before it marks the beginning of each of these cycles on the cliff face. The lower level of these bands of shale is rich in marine fossils, the remains of marine flora and fauna that flourished in the estuary tens of millions of years ago. As a result of the piling of layers on top of each other, the estuary eventually became a low range of hills. This stretched out to sea far beyond the present coastline and was part of a landmass that incorporated the Aran Islands. As the years went by and the sea rose, the elements began carving the hills away. During the ice ages, great sheets of frozen water covered the land, and when these began to melt, glaciers formed and planed the hillside into escarpments. The constant motion of the seas and winds eroded the exposed rock away, eventually forming a great wall of cliffs. This battle between the elements and ancient rocks is ongoing and can be witnessed in the offshore stacks. Great columns of rock eaten from the cliffs by the action of the sea, wind and rain and slowly disintegrating into nothing. Sooner or later the endless pressure of the elements will wear the sandstone, shale and flagstones away and the cliffs of Moher will be utterly destroyed by the Atlantic Ocean. Oh